Welcome to part 6 of the Python Basics tutorial series. Today we're going to be going over lists. So lists are written within square brackets as you can see here. To define a list all you have to do is have syntax like this where you have brackets and then basically just stuff that's comma separated inside your list. Um, it's important to note that in Python everything starts from index 0. So the first element of your list is at index 0. This would be index 1 this would be index 2 and index 3. So the most important thing about uh, lists is being able to access values in your list. And the way this works is you have your list that you just defined, and then you have the index of the element you want to retrieve. So if I want the first element in my list, i.e. index 0, I would just have z, brackets, and then index 0. And that would give me the first element in my list. One sec, I define my list first. Okay. And then if I want the element at index 2, I would just do this. One cool thing in Python is if you want to access elements toward the end of your list, it's a good idea oftentimes to do it this way where you have a negative number. Negative 1 corresponds to the last uh, element in your list, negative 2 would correspond to the second to last element in your list, and so on and so forth. The next thing we're going to go over is slicing. And the way this works is if you want just a portion of your list, a good idea is to have a slice of it. And the way this works is that the first index you list inside your brackets is inclusive. Basically, uh, in this example, I'm starting from index 0 and I'm going up until index 2. The second index, basically the thing to the right of your colon, is not inclusive. So in this example, I'm just getting index the elements corresponding to the index of 0 and 1, and not uh, the element with index 2. Okay, a few more examples is if you don't if you don't have anything to the left of your colon, then it just starts in the beginning. If you don't have anything to the right of your colon, it means the list goes all the way toward the end. Okay, and the best way to learn about slicing lists is actually just to experiment with it because it's a bit tricky syntax-wise, at least for beginners. Okay, so some of the most commonly associated functions with lists are the minimum, maximum, length, and sum, especially if you have a list that has uh, mostly integers and floats. So min just gets the min of your list, max gets the max, length just tells you how long your list is, and then sum just basically adds all the numbers together. Okay. So the rest of the tutorial, I'll just be going over commonly associated methods with lists. So for example, if you want to count the number of times a value occurs in a list, in this case, I want to find out how many times 4 occurs in my list, then you just have the method count and then what you're looking for in the inside of your parentheses. So 4 occurs 3 times in my list. Okay, if you want to return the first index where a value occurs, you just use the dot index method. And I want to find out the first occurrence of 4, so I just do dot index parentheses 4, and it occurs at index 0, as you can see here. Um, you can also specify where you want to start your search. So I want to find the first occurrence of 4 starting at index 3. This is how you do it. You can also uh, specify a range of indexes you want to search for your value. In this case, I'm searching uh, from 5 to 6. One, an, another common function with lists are sorting lists. So I just defined two lists here. If I want to sort from low to high uh, numerically, I just do just the dot sort method. If I want to go from high to low, I just do dot sort reverse equals true. It's very simple. If you want to sort a, a string filled list, you can use the sort method and it'll go from A to Z. Conversely, if you want from Z to A, you just do reverse equals true. And I should mention with uh, all these methods, we'll be going over practical applications of this in later videos, probably about two or three parts. We'll go over like actual applications where you'd actually use this in real life. Okay. Um, an important thing to note is that when you use a sort method, you alter the original list. So if you don't want to alter the original list, use the sorted function. And this basically just makes a copy of your list. 
and it doesn't alter the original list in any way. So if I run through all this code, and one thing to keep note here is when you use the sort function, you basically preserve your original list. Okay? So if you want to add to your list, which you defined, in this example, I'm adding a three to the end of my list. You just use the dot append method. If you want to remove the first occurrence of a value in the list, you just use the remove method. And then if you just want to remove uh, a certain element at a certain index, you use the pop method. And one cool thing about pop is once you remove uh, the element at the index you provide, it'll return the element. And we'll go into a practical application of this when we go over uh, prime numbers in a couple of tutorials, like uh, how to find a certain amount of prime numbers um, from 1 to 1,000 or whatever. You'll see. Okay? You can also use the extend method for concatenating lists. And the reason why this is a pretty cool method is it basically allows you to add on anything you want to your list. You can add lists together and it'll just be uh, a complete list, whereas if you use something like uh, insert, it'll be, you can sometimes have a list within lists. And we'll go into more details on this later. Okay, you can also use plus for concatenating lists, and I'm pretty guilty of using this. Um, it's pretty handy, so one thing to note is lists can be very diverse. Each element in a list can be a different type. And lists are really just a long list of pointers. And these pointers can point to really anything. Strings, floats, even this list itself. Which is kind of inception there. Okay? If you want to insert an item before the index you provide, you can use the insert method. And then here you'll see we have a nested list. And we'll go into uh, more of nested lists in later tutorials. And that's it for today. Please subscribe, and I should mention I have this code on my GitHub, and the next tutorial will be going over for loops and the application of for loops. Thanks.